Nice. Um, going into sort of more modern topics about rugby, uh, we've spoken about Eddie Jones a lot uh, on this podcast, about who he is <laughs> as a coach. Obviously, the the most recent thing being about the Joseph Sawali deal. Is that how you say yeah. his name? Uh, yeah, you Sawali, yeah. Very outspoken about that. Um, just want to get your thoughts on that deal and if it's moving Australia in the right direction or the wrong direction. Yeah, look, you know, we we are very uh, we are very uh, different as a country. We've got four football codes. You know, we've got Aussie rules where no one else in the world plays. We've got rugby league, which is only played by about six countries, and we've got football, which is a world of sports, and we've got rugby. So in Australia, um, grown up in the country, even now, rugby league is dominating. Aussie rules is dominating because it's free to wear. They've got a lot of money to promote the game. And in rugby, we haven't got money. We haven't got any grass money for grassroots rugby. Mm-hmm. So Savali went to a rugby school. Um, and I went a couple of years ago, 2000, when, when COVID hit, I was the ambassador for the World Cup. Uh, and I went to see Raylene Castle, who was a CEO. And I said, listen, you know, if you want me to go and speak to uh, Savali's uh, his parents, I can do that because they're Islanders. You know, everyone knows who I am. I come from a background which is government school. I didn't go to a private school. So, you know, and a lot of people, it, I thought it would be a lot more common to sort of say, look, here's your options. Um, anyway, she said, no, no, it's fine, it's fine. Anyway, it fell through. He goes to league. Um, and now, you know, we buy him back. So it, it's strange that we, we've got these schools, private schools that are there for the rugby system, but at the moment, all the players, all the good players, are signed up by league clubs before mm-hmm. before they go to school. So we then we we we're outnumbered. But the thing that I've been saying for fifteen years, and I see to see the chairman of Australian rugby has come out. Oh, you know, he can go overseas now. We can go here. And I go, well, I've been saying that for fifteen years. No one listens to what I say. Mm-hmm. But it sounds good now because it's in the mood, and it's very frustrating because I'm the only one. I do a lot of coaching. Um, I'm an ambassador for the Hunter region, which is outside Sydney. There's two and a half thousand kids. I go and coach from six to eighteen year olds. They won't let me any near the grades because they said, uh, you know, because I'm old and they said a lot of the a lot of the players can't connect with me or understand how I'm trying to coach. It's not hard to run the ball, really. It's pretty easy. Put the ball in your arm and go for it, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's very frustrating and. You know, and I keep on saying, we, we've got no money for grassroots. And there's a reason for this where World Rugby, um, two years ago, we were broke. And I believe, I was told by someone, I'm not sure if it's 100% correct, that, you know, uh, Rugby Australia had no money, got bailed out by World Rugby. And every year, you guys can verify if you want to check, uh, World Rugby gives every country $800,000 a year for grassroots rugby. That's what I've been told. Yeah. But Rugby Australia went to them and said, by the way, we'll forego that for the next 15 years so we don't owe you any money. So basically, there's no money for grassroots. So if you haven't got grassroots, where are you going to get the players from? Yeah. So now yeah. we go and buy a rugby league, a rugby union player who was at a school for rugby. So realistically now, if I was to give advice to any kid in the world in Australia, I said, go and play rugby league and I'll buy you back. Don't play rugby. Why play rugby? I'll give yeah. you 100000 when you only get $1.6 million. <laughs> And there's no investment in the world. You can put $100,000 down one year and get one point six two years later. So why yeah. wouldn't you? So that's yeah. the dilemma. And they just think it's, oh, well, go and buy all these players and we're going to show you. I said, well, why have grassroots? Why do we have under 20s, under 18s? Why do we have all these tournaments and yet we can't actually keep them? Because number one, the game is very boring. I'm very sorry, but it's a very structured game. Um, and the coaches are there to win. They don't care about entertaining. Entertaining is, for me, is running the ball, the opportunity to run from your own line. You see every spectacle every now and then. You see the France, the French. Now, I don't know if you know the statistic. There was a statistic made about the French Island game. Yeah. France scored 19 points for only being in the Irish 22 for, 90, for 53 seconds. Yeah. Okay. Ireland kept France out of their 22 for 59 minutes and three seconds. France score all their tries from counter-attack. They don't score from a lot of set phase. So the defence in set phase is perfect because it's a rugby league defence. 
We've got rugby league, I think, has come over and destroyed our game because we went amateur to professional overnight. Rugby league's the closest, and it's all about defence. There is no counter-attacking drills we do in Australia. There's no coaches can do it because they can't. So the coaches these days are educators. They're not coaches. Mm. They're educators. So they'll tell you, they go and do the exercise. Oh, guys, we've got a great enthusiasm. That's great. The passes are right up there or down the line. That's good, guys. Keep on going. And I'm going, wait, you've got to correct these guys. But that's what I do as a coach. But that's the way I learn. Yeah. Know? And it, that's the problem with me is I'll pull you up for something where the coach say, mate, just, just, you know, they're, they're really enjoying it. And I've gone, well, in a game of rugby, I would rather have my ball in front of me instead of over my head and someone break my ribs. Yeah. But the knowledge of the game out in Australia is, is very different. So, and that's where we, we struggle out here because of these other codes. We've always had that. But what we need to do is we need to entertain. It's great to buy these players. Yeah. So why do we buy wingers when we haven't got centres who can't pass the ball to the winger? Yeah, We've got five wingers at the moment, five wingers, and we've got Hanson who plays for Ireland, wouldn't, and played for the Brumbies, but nobody wanted him. Then he goes and plays international rugby for Ireland. So there's six yeah. wingers in Australia we've got, and there's only two can play. Yeah. It's bizarre. So I think what you're saying there is that the investment going into the players coming across from league, instead of the money going into buying players, it should be in grassroots to get players to. to yeah, well, if you ha- if you haven't got if you haven't got grassroots, <clears throat> pardon me, you've got no future. Yeah, where are you going to get the players from? Just buy them. Yeah, absolutely. You know? yeah. and that's that's our dilemma, and our dilemma is we've got to entertain. So. Rugby league was a big sport when I grew up. So when I came to Sydney in 1986, I went around the whole of Sydney. Every kid had a rugby league jersey on. 91 World Cup, we won. I went around Sydney. Every kid had a rugby union jersey on because we entertained. We played a style that people wanted to play. It's like in life, mate. If you don't entertain people, people will go somewhere else. Yeah. yeah. It's about the entertainment. But the thing is with us, we've got the people involved in the administrator who have been there for years and years, not accountable for one thing, are still there. Yeah, as I said, I've been cancelled because of my views. I still love the game. I've been passionate ever since. I've coached around the world, and the only place I can't coach would be on TV is in my own country. Yeah, yeah. So figure this that one out. Think, you know, um, this is why I think Australia is in a unique position compared to all the other <laughs> rugby playing nations, mm. just because they have rugby. <laughs> rugby union is, is the second most popular rugby in the country, let alone sport. Yeah. So well, it's, it's in Australia. Yeah. In Australia, we're the fifth sport. Yeah, Fifth. so it's yeah. very hard to get players to come for a grassroots, and then on top of that, you have instead of uh, RA investing money into grassroots, you've got them investing money into players coming across. Look, it's there's a choice, which is it's great, you know. <clears throat> if you want to do that, that's great. But what about all those kids that come through the system who have yeah. knocked back the rugby league deals? What happens to them? They'll just get upset and go. My son Jason, who's born in South Africa. He would rather play for a, an overseas team than Australia, you know? Mm. So it, it's sad. I played for Australia. Greg Cornelson, the great uh, <clears throat> flanker who scored four tries against the All Blacks at Eden Park in 1978, the only player to ever do it. His son went to a rugby school. Some guy who's still there came and said, oh, mate, he's not big enough. So now he plays in Japan. Mm. And his father played for the Wallabies. Yeah. It just shows you the people in position of power who have been there for years and years have been there. Some of them been there for 20 years and they've never won anything, but they're still there. And that's why we, we have a bit of a problem out here. Do you look at Australia and think um, it's more of a management issue? Cause some people would, you know, um, say maybe Australia haven't had the quality of players coming through. Do you think an Eddie Jones coming in could really revolutionize the team and make the most of the resources and maybe even, you know, challenge for the world cup this year? Look, it's very difficult to change a coach eight months out from the World Cup. Excuse me, guys. <clears throat> Pardon me. Um, so I think that's... Oh, I'll get some water. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Pardon me. That's better. Um, so, you know, I just think it's... Um, it is very difficult. It could work or it could not work. Uh, look at England at the moment, you know. I mean, I remember the last time uh, Martin Johnson was coach. <laughs> yeah. I think Andy Robinson was the assistant coach. Martin Johnson retired and he got the job he didn't want the job and he was not very good at it you remember back in those days so it doesn't always re- mean that the next guy coming through is the best possible coach 
You know, Eddie's been around, if you think he's been around like 20 years. I played club rugby with Eddie. Um, you know, and there's a lot of talk. My good mates, the Ellers, you know, Glenn Ellers coached under, under Eddie, worked Roger Gould. He's a very hard task, but that's the way Eddie coaches. So the players are either going to embrace him or they're going to struggle. Again, I don't know. I'm in the outer. I just see from the outside and what I hear what people say. Um, eight months out from World Cup, what style of rugby? You know, a month yeah. ago, Eddie in the paper came out and said, uh, he went back to school. He, he went to school with the Ellers, Mark Glenn and Gary Ella. And he said, guys, we've got to run the ball like the Ellers. Two days ago, he's gone, uh, running game in Australia is dead. We're going to kick the ball to win the World Cup. So with one month, we've changed what we're going to do from now, what we're doing. You know, yeah. so it's, but that's that's the way Eddie operates. You know, I've got to interview him on Friday, so I've got to be very careful. But Eddie's <laughs> Eddie. He's very, he's been around, mate. You know, he knows, he's, he helped South Africa in the World Cup 2007. Uh, he's coached Japan to beat South Africa. So he, he's very knowledgeable. Uh, but again, will the players react? I, we'll have to wait and see. Well, with, uh, with the World Cup eight months away, like, what players for Australia do you think will be the deciding factor on how far they progress the World Cup? Well, <clears throat> again, depends on the style of rugby. Uh, we've got, uh, well, this young guy of rugby league, he's not, he's not available for 18 months. <laughs> you know, and there's, there's a big problem at the moment where the rugby league guys are saying, just get rid of him. He's already signed. Just get rid of him now. So what happens now? As I said, you've got Kiran Drani. Uh, sorry, you've got uh, Korobetti, who's a very good winger. You go to Japan. Uh, you've got three other players at the moment playing for Australia on the wing. Where are we going to put them all? So at least we've got a, a, a abundance of outside backs, but you need the 10. We have a problem at the 10 at the moment. We haven't got a number 10. Uh, we haven't got a number 12. Uh, we haven't got a 13. Yeah. They're all individuals. So we've got the finishers, but where's the creators? Where's the guys going to give them the ball? You know, it's great to have talent, but one person in a team cannot win a game. You need a whole team. You know, it's not one individual cannot win a game or win a World Cup for you. They can perform well in games and help you. But everybody needs to do their work, needs to do their uh, understanding and their roles. And again, you know, we'll have to wait and see how the progress is, you know, this year leading into the World Cup. Yeah, it's, it's interesting that you said about obviously lack of almost position or depth in the, in the sort of midfield with the 10, 12, 13. Uh, do you think that obviously there's been talk of Quaid Cooper maybe returning? Obviously, Lola Seo's had the 10 shirt for a while. Who do you think will have that 10 shirt? going into the World Cup? Well, we have, uh, like, Donaldson, who played uh, last year on tour. Um, he's at New South Wales. He's playing fullback. For some reason, these coaches love putting players in positions they want them to be in, but it's not their favourite position. Yeah. Okay, you know, the way I look at things, you know, the teams that really do well are the teams that got the good combinations. Combinations in big games are vital. So, Quay Cooper plays in Japan, doesn't play in Australia. So, if he does come back, he'll come back just before the World Cup. He's going to play with two guys that he hasn't played with all year. So under pressure, you know, normally the more you play, uh, I know it's a long time ago, guys, and I always harp on this, World Cup 91, we had two teams, New South Wales, Queensland. So in our team, we had, I think it was eight New South Welshmen, nine Queenslanders. Combinations left, right and centre. So eight, nine and ten, great combination. Uh, ten, twelve and thirteen, Queenslanders. You know what I mean? So in big games, you know each other, each other very, very well. And that's why consistently picking the team, the same team helps you in confidence. Under pressure, you can rely on things and try different things. If you keep on play, picking players from overseas, like if Quade Cooper's been out, he's been in the Achilles last year, comes back, hasn't played with these guys, you know, what's that going to happen? You know, we're just going to kick the ball away. Um, so you know, that's the way I look at a game. Obviously, it's very different these days, uh, the way coaches look at players. You know, given players three minutes in a test match to come on and expect to win a game. Yeah. I mean, were well, they Superman? Really? <laughs> I mean, it's 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 ridiculous. But that's professionally, that's what they do. You know, there's so much pressure on the coaches from the managers to play their plays as well. So they've got to get a couple of minutes to get a test. You know, it doesn't work like the old days. You when we played, you don't come off because if I got injured and you were playing and you played well, I wouldn't be seen again. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, in those days, we all played 80 minutes, you know. I know it's very different, and people say I'm living the old days, but that's all I can go back. I played professional rugby uh, for many years as well, and um, I understand the game. The game is a great game, but we, uh, we're trying to make it very complicated. 